Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to review a video by Senri Monroe where, where he shows a battery that is two times as good as Tesla's battery. It's by a new company that I have never heard of. And as a Tesla investor this is a very interesting video because is this something that could compete with Tesla, that could possibly kill Tesla? Uh, and I want to give you my thoughts around this. And let's see what Sandy Monroe has to say. By the way, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and you like this video. Thank you. Hey, boys and girls. Um, welcome back to uh, Monroe Live. And uh, this is kind of like breaking news. Uh, this morning at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, uh, the folks over at um, Ampris released some information. We've known about it for a couple of days, but we weren't allowed to put anything out until now. And uh, so I'm, I'm here with Anthony. And um, today what we're going to do is <clears throat> talk a little bit about this new battery, which is really exciting. Um, this is a 500 uh, watt hour per kilogram battery. And um, quite frankly, this is really a big deal. <clears throat> it's it's a super big deal because the reason why electric planes are not possible because I think that the batteries needed to reach two or three hundred uh, watts per uh, kilogram and this is at 500 so it's way over that level so this would make electric planes a reality not electric rockets uh, but it would be a quantum leap uh, forward. Using a silicon anode platform um, with their lithium ion uh, stuff an unprecedented density of 500 watt hours per kilogram or 1300 watt hours per liter. Um, Anthony's got some little sketches here to show you how this kind of compares in the marketplace. So, on a gravimetric scale, um, your Tesla 2170 is around 242 uh, Rivian using a different chemistry at 259 watt hours per liter. Uh, 4680 is a little bit lower just because they took out the silicon from the anode. By the way, notice how Ford's battery is better in this than Tesla's. Rivian's is better and the new 4680 cell is the lowest of the bunch and this is more than double than Tesla's. I will come back to this in a bit. Um, and a pouch cell, which is a little bit more efficient just due to the packing, is around 285. So they're jumping all the way up to 500 watt hours per liter on a cell <laughs> density. Energy density. Yeah, and then uh, on volumetric, um, what their website says 1400 for one, but the presentation said yeah, 1300. 13. But we're jumping from 689 for the Tesla 2170, 722 for Rivian 2170, uh, 626 watt hours per liter for the 4680 Tesla, and a pouch can get about 712. And they're jumping almost to double. Yeah. Uh, more than double in most cases. Yeah, it's uh, here they've cocked out about. So the reason why this is very interesting is because it reminds me of the iPhone, how the iPhone doesn't have the best specs of neither the fastest chip, neither the biggest uh, milliampere hour uh, battery, but the iPhone has the best system to use the chip and the battery to have one of the longest battery lives, right? And Tesla has to consider a lot of viewpoints. One of them is scalable production. So they obviously couldn't make a very high density uh, battery mass produced. And you can see that the 4680, which was Tesla's new generation of batteries, is slightly worse than the batteries that they had before. But what is better with these batteries is that they're easier to produce and they're way cheaper. And Tesla can engineer around this and, you know, make the car lighter, you know, for example, with the 48 uh, volt wires, it can make the car use less electricity. So Tesla still has a better range than Rivian or Ford. So this is very, very interesting to see. I just wanted to share that with you. 100% better. This is a really kind of a big deal. Um, Nobody's got anything quite like this ready for the marketplace, but these guys um, are in the process now of developing a new um, 775,000 square foot facility in uh, Brighton, Colorado. This is going to be about a five gigawatt hour uh, manufacturing capacity. It's incredible when you look at this, and they've already tested it through um, Alto Hops, the um, Airbus uh, subsidiary that does. Uh, 
uh, solar high altitude uh, platform stations. Anyway, uh, they uh, they've already tested it in at um, at 25 degrees C, which is about 70. Yeah. 70. No, it's 75. No, 77. About 77 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, they got uh, 504 watt hours per kilogram and 1321 watt hours um, uh, per liter. That's I mean, it's already been proven and whatnot, and they're in the process of making these things. So that's what kind of uh, that's what kind of is shocking. But what we would like to do a little bit is maybe tell you something about how this product is actually manufactured. What you're looking at here is the um, is the way they're they're basically I don't know whether you call it growing or um, it, it might be a deposition. Deposition, might... whatever. Anyways, what you're looking there in the, in the center is the um, is the silicon which replaces graphite. <clears throat> they don't use any graphite, and graphite right now is a really tough thing because the only thing we the only place we can get this is from some mine in Quebec, Quebec, uh, Canada, or and that's at limited uh, numbers, and then the rest of it comes from uh, comes from China. So having it go with silicon, which is about the best thing you can laminate. Uh, right. uh, uh, lithium too. So this is really a big deal. Um, I think that I think that in essence, um, looking at this, and we've we've seen other battery packs that are talking about 485, 450, something like that. But they're not in real production. These guys, it sounds like, are in production. And so you ask yourself, well, why would they want to do that? And that's for this kind of a product here. So we've talked about ASX in the past. Um, you know, their, um, uh, their uh, VTOL is huge, um, and it has uh, government support, the, the Air Force, I think, or somebody wants to buy yeah. this thing. Um, having, having something like this, this battery pack enables this. So I'm going to be giving ASX a call, actually, right after we get this video done. Uh, to let them know that maybe uh, this is a better pack than uh, everything they've ever looked at in the past. Exactly what he's saying, that this battery is mostly for, it's probably cost a lot of money and it makes sense in governmental use cases and also in uh, this airplane uh, use cases. But I highly doubt that, I, basically I'm sure that Tesla has looked at this uh, method and they knew about it and they couldn't make it mass produce it for a reasonable price so therefore they went with the 4680 because their sole focus is on like how how do we switch over the planet to affordable electric cars and transition to sustainable energy and that's correct and this will be i think a money maker it's fantastic technology it's going to enable a lot of things but not in tesla's niche so i wanted to kind of like breeze through this quickly, but I also don't want to lose track of uh, the technical aspect. So right. can you give us some detail here? So what they're doing is a little neat because they're using the silicon nanowires. So kind of like how carbon yeah. does nanotubes, they're doing the same thing. And then they're coating it with um, a resin-like material to keep it stable. But uh, they're using a first principles um, aspect where you're going from a most energy dense material that can hold a lot of lithium. So silicon can hold out seven times as much lithium per cubic volume or unit volume as graphite. So that's how they're able to achieve this. And the hard part is the um, swelling. So lithium will swell with the amount of lithium it absorbs. And they're saying they can get around this using the nano wires uh, grown this way with the protective coating. Mm. I think it's kind of brilliant, and apparently it's been around for quite a while. I just never heard of them before. I, uh, it could be because they're in aerospace mostly. Um, you know, that's where you can, you, you get the biggest bang for your buck, a dollar, I should say, um, when you're fooling around with aircraft. Aircraft right. need everything light and are willing to pay, in, um, in old-fashioned terms, at Boeing it was $600 per, um, uh, per pound. So that's, a, that's a, a, a chunk of change that we can't afford in the auto industry. However, if I can cut the battery size in half and get, and get the yeah. same range, or I can leave the battery size the same and uh, wind up with two, at least two times the range, maybe even more, that's, 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 a, uh, that's, a, good, that's a good coin to flip. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
Anyhow, we'll probably be going out to have a look at these guys and talk to them at greater length and in more detail. But I thought we'd just get this out to you as quickly as we could. Again, thanks very much. Yeah, so very interesting video and he also confirmed my suspicion that this is in the aerospace and you know VTOL vertical uh, takeoff and landing planes this is where it, you really it, it makes sense to use it. I'm 100% sure Tesla has looked at it but it was not something that they could mass produce. However, it would be very interesting if you could uh, have a tuning uh, workshop or you know where you can take your Tesla and they would switch out the battery because on a 100 uh, kilowatt hour Tesla, you could have like a 220 kilowatt hour battery and you would take the range from, what is it now, 500 miles to over a thousand miles. So that would be very interesting and I think that there would be people who would uh, pay for that. Again, you can ask, is it needed? Because there's always a Tesla supercharger station and can you really go a thousand miles in your car without uh, stopping to you know anyways have to pee or eat or something like this so I guess it's not so needed in in the car market uh, definitely not a Tesla killer but this will enable some very very interesting technologies that I'm looking forward to anyways I hope you guys like this video please make sure you are subscribed if uh, you haven't done it and check out the patreon link in the description box below to get access to exclusive content and get access to me and my palantir and tesla valuations and just support the channel it would make me very happy anyways thank you for watching i appreciate it and i see you in the next video ciao ciao